Hi everybody, I am Kara Medico, co-creator of Kids Art Projects 101, and I am here to share a video tutorial of our art teacher planner and binder. I am screen sharing the 20 page resource overview PDF that we put together to give users a really nice broad sense of how this planner is organized. If you're the kind of person that is very familiar with Google Slides or Microsoft PowerPoint, you may be able to skim through this resource overview, reach uh, the final page, click to download the document, dive in and hit the ground running. If you are the kind of person who would appreciate a little bit more detailed guidance as you get this planner set up and customized, then this video tutorial is for you. First decisions you have to make with this planner is, am I going to have a digital planner or am I going to go with a printed version? The choice is totally yours. You could go with a hybrid idea if you want to. I'm going for digital this year, but traditionally I've gone printed. So if that's your choice, I 100% hear you. Sometimes it's nice to just have a physical example of that planner in your hand to manipulate and work with. Um, if you're going digital, you will need access to Google Slides or Microsoft PowerPoint. Um, if you go with Google Slides, you have a real-time live update feature so that no matter where you're accessing this planner, whether it's on your phone, at your classroom, in your you know, living room at home, you constantly have the most up-to-date version of your planner. If you are going with uh, PowerPoint, you can still do that. You just need to kind of save your most recent copy from PowerPoint onto your drive or the cloud, anywhere you save files that you want to be able to access from anywhere. Um, if you are going with a printed version, you um, have the added bonus of not needing to log in anywhere to access your planner. You have a physical copy. You bring it home with you. If you want to work on it at home, keep it in your classroom. If you only want to work on it when you're in your classroom. Um, the printed version is going to be pretty much a a printed version of what you're seeing online and because it is designed with maximum screen you know viewability in mind it's a landscape orientation so if you are going to say print this and put it in a three ring binder you're going to want to factor in the idea that this binder is going to be, need to be in a landscape orientation as well which might feel a little odd but if you're a lefty like me it's actually kind of nice to have the rings at the top now if you're going with a three ring binder, you want to just keep in mind a clear cover is kind of nice because then you can print one of your own customized cover options and slide that in. You might also want to invest in some um, tab dividers and maybe even some sheet protectors to slide your pages in so that they stay nice and durable in the art room. If you don't want to go the three ring binder uh, route, you have other options. You could laminate a cover and take the whole printed thing to say a place like Staples or Office Depot and get them to do a plastic spiral binding for you. You can also go for disc binding if you've seen those around campus. A lot of regular ed teachers at my school um, get store-bought versions of those. I love the way they look. I love the way they function but there's never one that's really ideal for an art teacher, which is why I love this version because you can customize that in your own way if you want to go that direction. Now, um, the only other thing I would advise you to keep in mind if you're going to go with a printed version of this planner is that you do not need to print every single page in this file and then handwrite on it. You can print and handwrite, but you definitely don't want to print every page in this file because there are certain things in the way this file is set up right out of the gate that are meant to be deleted. For example, there's four cover options. You don't need to print all four of those options. You pick the one you want, customize it, and then print that one. So just be thoughtful about how you approach this if you are going to be printing. You want to be very selective about what you're choosing to use ink on. Now, um, you can also do a lot of your customization on a computer before you print. So that's something else to think about. Okay, so those are the things you wanna be considering as far as formatting goes. That's decision number one. Let's move on to your cover selection. You have 
four super fun cover choices. They are on display on the screen right now. They're bright, fun colors. They're all art teacher related. And of course, once you make a choice on which cover you want, you can go in and customize your name on there. You can change the font. You can change the color of the text and all that fun stuff. So we'll get deep into that once we open the file. Next for this moment, let's talk about your navigation, your different sections of how this planner is set up. Your sections overview page is currently showing on the screen. There are eight sections in this planner and on your sections homepage, you will see that the sections are listed in two different ways. They're nice and big right here, or you can also see them listed horizontally at the top. Everywhere in your planner, they're gonna be listed horizontally at the top, but on the home page, they're nice and big like this as well. We're gonna dive in deep to each of these sections once we open up the planner in this tutorial. For now, just know that there are eight different sections. On the last page of your resource overview, you're going to see this gray button, which you're going to want to push to download your copy of the actual planner. As soon as you push it, you're going to be invited to make a copy. This is going to drop a copy of the planner on your Google Drive. Now, if you're not that familiar with how Google Drive works, anyone who has a Google account, if you have a Gmail um, email address, you have a Google Drive. If you're like me and have multiple Google accounts, you want to just be mindful of which one you're logged into because that's going to determine where this file gets copied. If it accidentally gets copied in the wrong drive, don't worry, you can move it, but just be mindful so that you're aware and not feeling like, hey, I can't find the file, where did it go? Um, if you navigate out, I'm just going to go to my drive so you can see where it landed. For me, it just lands right here on, um, ignore all these recent files, it just lands on my, just all by itself on my Google Drive. Now, first thing I recommend doing is right clicking on it and making a copy. Now I actually am gonna have two versions of it on my drive and we'll talk about um, why in a second. I'm gonna go back to the actual, well actually before I do that, if I wanted to open this in PowerPoint, I would right click on it and download. And as soon as it downloads, you'll see it kind of pop up at the bottom of your screen. You can just double click that. And here we go. We're opening it up in PowerPoint. I'm going to hit enable editing. And then I can edit this the way that I would edit any PowerPoint slideshow. I can save it onto my computer or wherever I want it to land. Um, and you would navigate it through it just the way you would navigate through any slideshow. For the rest of this tutorial, I'm going to be um, working in Google Slides. But if you have any PowerPoint specific questions, please just let me know. I'd be happy to answer them. So let's go back to our version of this planner in Google Slides. First thing I'm going to do is rename my planner. I'm going to name it Dr. Medico's Planner. Now it has a different name from that duplicate I made in my drive. That duplicate is just a backup safety net. This customization process is going to involve deleting things, rearranging things, editing things. If you ever get to the point where you got carried away and made so many changes that you kind of just need a fresh start and you want to go back to the basics, you will have that backup copy in your drive so that you can revert at any time you want to. Let's say, for example, right out of the gate, we're about to make a cover selection. If a month from now you say, hmm, I kind of wish I had chosen that other one, you can go back and do that without any fear of having lost access. Now, of course, if you don't save a backup copy or you lose your backup copy, we'll always help you out and give you a backup copy. But this makes it really convenient so that you can do that independently without having to stop and log in and reach out to us. So in your 
your planner. You'll see right away along this side um, left navigation column, you have four cover choices. And we already took a quick glance at those, but now would be the time where you've got to actually make your choice. I'm going with the top one, the colored pencil one. So what I'm going to do right away is delete the ones I don't want. I can literally click the slide over here in the navigation column and then hit the delete button on my keyboard or I can right click on it and hit delete from a drop down menu. You can customize the text on your cover page by just highlighting the name and retyping it however you want it to read. I'm going to highlight this text and center it. You can change the font. You can change whether it's bold. You can change the color of it if you wanted to. Um, that all is completely up to you. So that's how you customize your cover. Okay, so moving right along, when we go to the second slide at this point, we are at our section homepage. We talked about this briefly before. There are eight different sections. Each of these sections can be navigated to with a hyperlink. So in um, this particular mode right now in Google Slides, we're in edit mode, which means if we roll over the word rotations, for example, nothing really happens, right? But that, ah, that button is a navigation button. And all we have to do because we're in edit mode is click on it and then we see this drop down um, box appear that says slide 30. So if I click on that, ah, now I'm on the rotations section homepage. If I want to go back to the notes section, I click on that box, drop down to slide five, and now I'm on the notes section homepage. So all of these are totally functioning navigation buttons, but because we're in editing mode, we have to click on the button and then click on that menu that drops down. Um, if you go into view slideshow mode, so if you're in present mode or slideshow mode, you don't have to do that. You just click on the button and you get where you're trying to go. So it's a lot quicker in slideshow mode, but the difference is that if you actually wanted to edit something, you can't really do that in slideshow mode. Let's say I wanted to change that text. Oh, instead, it just navigated me to another slide the way if you were in any slideshow, if you click any button, it just navigates you to the next slide. So anytime you're wanting to actually make changes, which is what we're trying to do right now, we don't want to be in present mode or slideshow mode. We need to be in edit mode. And that's going to affect our ability to navigate just slightly. We just have to look for that drop down menu. So in our sorry i should go back here our first section is the reference section so we're going to take a closer look at what the reference section is all about then we'll go in and look at the notes section the calendar section and so on we're going to step by step navigate through these sections so that you can get a good sense of how each one is set up and figure out what key slides from these sections will be most useful to you So the reference section. If we navigate to our reference homepage, we see a slide that just has this one quick reference button. That's because this section only has one page. It's a short section, but it is super useful. It has an entire spread of quick reference contact info kind of stuff, stuff that helps you um, kind of corral all the little nitty gritty details about your employee ID, info about your district, info about the AP, the guidance counselor, and all that kind of stuff at your site. What are their phone numbers? What's your superintendent's name and contact info? All that kind of stuff. If you are the kind of person that is brand new out of school, this might be the stuff that you need access to, to set yourself up for trainings and that kind of thing. And it's hard to remember when you're brand new. If you are sharing 
uh, yourself between multiple schools, it's really convenient to kind of have all this in one spot so that you can um, access it at a quick glance. So that's what this page is all about. You can just literally text that your responses, fill this all out by clicking in each field. You can also go over here and add additional fields if there is certain information or people that you want to have their contact info at quick glance on this page. You can move where the slide is going to live in your planner. If you want to bump it all the way to the end, you can. If you want it right behind the cover, that works too. Now let's take a look at our notes page. I'm going to go up here and drop down to my notes homepage and I see that my notes section is filled with four different types of note pages grid notes bullet notes line notes and blank notes now these are the kind of thing that you may or may not find useful if you don't need this kind of thing you can literally delete this entire section if you're the kind of person that likes to write a whole bunch of notes when you're at meetings and whatnot then these forms might be actually pretty useful to you. You can select the style of note page that you like the best and just save that one. This is where all your kind of choices come in. But let's navigate through and take a quick look at each one. Grid notes. It's a page that's basically filled with what looks like graph paper. Now, if you are going to be working in a digital format, I've dropped in two boxes so that you can start texting right on top of those. If you are going to be working in a printed format, you don't want these boxes here. You don't want, um, you know, sample text column one in the middle of your printed sheet. So you want to delete those boxes before you print. Also, if we go back over here to this navigation column, you can right click and duplicate a certain note page. If you want to have a whole bunch of them, you can go over here to delete a note page format. If you think, yeah, that one's not really for me. Um, bullet notes is the second one available and it doesn't show up super good at this scale but if we zoom in a bullet page is kind of like um, bullet journaling the instead of a grid it's dots so if you find that appealing then bullet notes is going to be useful to you the next one is something that looks more like lined paper if you love this style um, I recommend highlighting all this text Oops, let me get it all. For some reason, when it drops in Google Slides, I lose this formatting feature. So let's go right up here to line and paragraph spacing and customize the spacing to 1.35. That way, your text actually lines up with those blue lines on that note page. Again, if you were going to print this page out, you would actually just delete that box by right clicking on it and just delete the whole box. Um, Hang on, I don't know if I did that right and I want to show you right. Go right on the box and hit delete. See that box is gone and then you can print it like that. Um, you might also just insert a real loose leaf piece of paper if that floats your boat. Just always remember you've got options. Now, the last one is a blank page. Again, you could just use a blank piece of paper, but if you like the idea of it having kind of that consistent look throughout your planner in a printed version, then you would just delete these two text boxes and print away as many copies as you want. Next, we're going to look at the calendar section of the planner. super excited about the calendar section of the planner because it is where you can get into the nitty-gritty of getting all your dates and events and things lined up in the calendar section like for example if you were printing you would never want to print this page because this really only serves to help you navigate within the calendar section in a digital format so skip this any of these session home pages if you're printing but if you're working digitally Go ahead and use that page to navigate. The first slide in this section is a yearly overview. It starts with the month of August and ends with the month of July. The next two slides are just for kind of big picture, organized special dates, 
and meetings and PDs. This is where you can actually type into a box and let's say you write Labor Day, um, Labor Day fundraiser or something like that. If you were gonna have a school carnival or a trunk or treat type of event, I'm having an art show in the fall and an art show in the spring. You could go in and write in any of these boxes. In your meetings and PDs, this is where you might say, okay, I've got to participate in this training or every Thursday we do a PLC for professional development points or I'm doing this one workshop online. You can kind of map all that out by clicking directly in here. Now, if you don't find that necessary, if you want to just go ahead and jot those things right in directly into a calendar page, then you may not find this slide necessary. Ooh, the next slide is super fun. This is the stickers page, the digital stickers. Now, this one offers all these little images that literally operate as digital stickers. So let's say I want to put this first day of school sticker on the first day of school in my calendar. I'm gonna right click and copy. And now I'm going to August. For me, my first day of school is August 10th. So I'm going to right click and, uh, why did I just do that? Let's try that again. Um, sorry, I just did something crazy. Paste, here's my um, sticker. I'm gonna put it on August 10th. How fun is that? Now, you can also just type into these boxes if that feels easier. You also have this column over here where I've kind of auto-populated some fun art-related events into each month for you. Um, but you can sit there and type in any of those um, slots as well as you make your calendar plan. Now that uh, set of 12 months of calendars Goes, takes you all the way to the end of the calendar section. The next section in your planner is a schedule section. So we'll talk about that one next. Okay, so the schedule section here, we're at the schedule section homepage. You'll see right away that in this section, there are two sheets available. One is a schedule for anybody who's scheduled uh, Monday through Friday looks pretty consistent. And then one where your schedule Monday, Tuesday, Thursday, Friday is consistent, but Wednesday is a little different. That's me. Um, I know that's a lot of people, but if you are the kind of person that has the same schedule day in, day out, this format is going to probably be ideal for you. Or if you have block scheduling, this one should work as well. You just click in any box and write what you got going on. You can customize your time slots over here on the left. Now, looking at the one where Wednesday's a little different, you see I've kind of filled in some sample ones here just to kind of give you a sense of what I was thinking when I made this, but you can't modify that obviously to line up with your schedule. You wouldn't keep both of these necessarily. You would pick which one works best for you and then you would delete the other one. So yet again, an example of, you don't wanna just blindly print every form. You're not gonna need both of these. You gotta pick which one works best for you. So the next section is all about rotations. In the rotations section, we see options that relate to a five day rotation all the way through eight day rotation. Now, if you don't teach in an elementary school setting, this particular section may not apply to you. In my case at the elementary setting, we see all the students in the entire school over the course of a week. So that's a five day rotation, but that rotation doesn't stay the same. For example, I don't always see the same group of kids on Mondays. I might see them on Mondays this week and then on Tuesdays the next week and Wednesday the next week because Wednesdays are early release days so they want to kind of rotate who ends up only in art for 30 minutes like I don't know it gets complicated but if you know you know type of thing and if this particular rotation 
function is of use to you, then here you go, enjoy. Now, if you are not a rotation kind of person, you might just benefit from having one spot where you write down all of the classes that you te do teach, and that's the all classes page. This is where you can list out all your kindergarten classes, first grade classes, second grade classes. Now you can change that. If you wanted to write sixth grade classes, 12th grade classes, AP classes, you could do that up there. Um, all the way across, if you don't have pre-K, leave that one blank. If you wanna swap that out for art club kids or something like that, you can do that. Now, as far as the rotations go, this should give you a sense of how this works. It's just your rotation days up top. Now, in my, we're the lions, the long, the, uh, the, our rotation is done in an acronym for our school, L-I-O-N-S. So I would go in and customize this because in my world, we refer to those rotation days as day L, day O, day N. So if that is something that makes sense for you, customize that and then drop in who you see on that particular day. You can also customize, like in my world, I always see third grade first. So I would wanna write a three at the top. I don't wanna list them in consecutive order. I wanna list them in the order that I actually see them. So that's all customizable, um, whether you are on the six, seven, eight day rotation, all of those are customizable. You just kind of drop the teacher's name in to the box wherever it applies. Our next section is our rosters section. This one is a big one. Let's talk about this one next. So for the rosters section, you'll see there's only one little button in here. And that's because you're going to duplicate your roster page for every single class you teach. In my class case, I think I teach 36 classes. So um, I would literally duplicate the sheet 36 times and I would organize those based on my rotational schedule. So I wouldn't put all my kindergarten groups class lists together or my first grade class lists together. I would put them in the rotational order that I see them. So one from every grade for each rotational day, if that makes sense. But you've got your own unique setup, so you're gonna organize this in the way that makes most sense to you. But the beauty of having it in a digital format is that you can rearrange the order of your rosters in any way that makes sense for you. So it's pretty self-explanatory. But this entire column over here is where you're going to drop in your student's name. You would drop in your teacher's name. If you have certain tables that certain kids sit at and you like to keep track of that kind of thing, you would write those into your seating groups. Down here, um, add notes. I put an example one this class missed last week because of the school assembly. I know in my case, certain groups just get the short stick sometimes if the fire alarm goes off or <clears throat> they have a field trip or something so you can make little notes that sort of jog your memory when they return um, oh they're a little behind everyone or this group just flies through everything so I added in a bonus activity for them over here oh there's a spot to write in the grade for this class the day again if that's if you're doing rotations and then here's where you're gonna track your activities I typically see kids 36 times in a school year. Um, that obviously may be different for you, so you can modify that if necessary. You would just drop in, okay, on this first session with them, I did the, um, you know, we did introductions and routines the second day. We dove right into a lesson on Pete Mondrian the third day. We continued Pete Mondrian. That's just like your personal log to keep you on track with where each class is. Um, so, you know what, I said you could modify. There's certain, you can't modify these actual numbers right here. So if you had them more than 36 times, you would duplicate this class sheet or go back and start over at the top. Um, so I hope that helps with the roster section. It looks like our next section is all about planning. Okay. Planning section. This is a big one. You have 
curriculum maps by grade and by month that you can fill out. That's if you're looking at mapping out your whole year at a glance. Then you can map out a month view or you can map out a weekly view. Depending on your preference, your planning needs, um, maybe this is something that's been something that you wanted to organize for a long time and you just never quite could figure out how to visualize it or just always got caught up in the formatting issues, here you go. This one is going to be a big time saver. You can go in and customize what kind of, you know, what grade level this map is going to be. You can customize, again, if you start in September or you want to start in January, you can change that. You can drop images into these boxes. That, um, I went ahead and dropped in one per grade level here, second grade, third grade. Again, you could put ninth grade, 10th grade. Um, and then here we flip. This one is the grades are written in the boxes. Again, that's all customizable though. And the month is up top. You can put little notes here. So if it's easier for you to think by month, and you want to see where everybody's at during the month of August and where everybody's at in the month of December, then this format that might be more useful to you. Um, so we're going through August, November, December, January, February, all the way through to July. And then here we go with our weekly view. This is say all the weeks of August. If you wanted to go in and write out your plans by week because in the other one it would just be you know one block for the whole month so if you really wanted to kind of get in there a little bit tighter and go week by week this is your bet now you might be saying why are there five weeks but the, the reality is some months do have five weeks um so rather than go and figure each one of those out i just put five and if a particular month only has four weeks leave that fifth row um empty uh okay so we go through august i put in one for every month for you in case that format appeals to you now again you may not find that format all that useful and in that case you would highlight all those boxes and chuck them that is okay if you went with a different format for this planning section you're not going to need necessarily to rewrite it in every different um, way possible now then we move after we have those weekly views for each month here we go into a different style where you're writing week of so in say this case the week of august 15th i'm going in and where i'm really looking like almost daily what am i doing monday tuesday through friday that particular week so again we're zooming in a little bit deeper here on our plans and there's just a different format the difference between these two formats is that the grades are across the top in this one and the dates are along the side. In this one, the days are along the top and you would put the grades along this side. So I know some people have you know, their preferences. So I went ahead and threw both of those ones in and that is it for the planning section. Now that is just a world in and of itself right there. So have fun with that one. I'd be curious to see how, I would love to hear from you how you come up with um, customizing that section to meet your needs. Next up, we have our final section and it's our miscellaneous section. For the miscellaneous section, I just threw in all the other random forms I typically like to keep in my planner. I just didn't really have a home in any of the other sections. The first one is room layout. This one's kind of fun. This was a big deal for us during COVID because they wanted to be able to, you know, track exactly where each kid sat, who they sat near and all that stuff. But I just found that I really like it either way. It is, you could copy one of these into every single class roster if you wanted to really get kind of granular about seating arrangements and all that. But you can, you know, if this was your door, you can move it. If you wanted this table over here if you really have a long table you could completely edit anything about this these were my sinks if you wanted to add a long countertop over here it's just kind of a little really simplified you know illustration board and you just move the shapes around and show what your room layout looks like if you're thinking about rearranging things you can use this 
as a sort of a drafting page um, to play around with. So the next page, if we go back here, is supply checkout. Oh, isn't this convenient? When you lend things, a random kid, of course, I feel like knocks on my door every day of the week saying, Mr. So-and-so wants to know if he can borrow some Elmer's clue or Miss So-and-so wants to know if you have, you know, soft paintbrushes or large paintbrushes or foam brushes or red paint. Or... So this is where you kind of keep track of all that stuff in um, the case that you're handing people supplies that you need to make sure you get back. Um, and so you would just fill that out again. It's pretty self-explanatory what they borrowed, how much they borrowed, who borrowed it, when they borrowed it, and then when you get it back. Um, the next form is a communication log. This is useful if you are needing to document who, which of your students' parents you're communicating with. Um, you want to make sure you know you're tracking that kind of stuff in the case that admin is wanting to know or wanting to verify that something was communicated if you're logging all of that um, you're just setting yourself up to streamline any questions that might come your way or if you're wanting to make sure did i ask that person you know you can you can track that all in a communication log which can be pretty convenient and you can also use that i find to um track that you're not only sending home a certain type of information, like you don't want to be giving all negative feedback through communication. Maybe use this to say, okay, I've sent a lot of negative stuff home. Maybe it's time to send some good news home um, to some people or to follow up with someone who was struggling and let their parents know you're seeing the improvement you were hoping to see and thank them for working with you, that kind of thing. And then our very last page in the planner is an absence info and log. If you are the kind of person that is constantly forgetting, did I earn a comp day or didn't I, how many sick days do I have left? Which sub did I like that one time? This is a perfect place to kind of track all that stuff. So again, it's pretty self-explanatory. You would just go in and change the text, add things, you know, what are your half day hours versus your full day hours? You know, who are you supposed to notify when you wake up and you feel sick? I mean, sometimes when you're in the moment, you just kind of forget all the protocol. If it's been a while between sick days, you sort of forget what you're supposed to be doing. So it's nice to kind of just have all that written out. And this is the form for you. So whew, thank you to those of you who made it all the way to the finish line. I hope that you have found this video tutorial useful. And I hope that you have fun with this planner. would love to hear from you if you have questions about anything in particular or want to offer any feedback or suggestions for changes that might come in next year's version. I am all ears. So that's it for today. Thanks again for listening.